Hi, welcome to yet another tutorial in Maya. And uh, today what we're going to take a look at, which is something that when I first opened up Maya, I wanted to do. Um, this was one of the first starts that um, really helps you get started with texturing um, just on a basic level. So let's take a look at the scene. Um, by using a 2D and a 3D bump node, um, or 3D or 2D bump, basically as they're described, we add basically bumps or you know textures to a surface. Now by default my always gives you just a regular Lambert shader and so really it takes a little bit of work to get these here but essentially that's what we're going to be doing today. And um, I'm going to come over here and open up my Hypershade and as you can see what I've done here is created a um, oh, I basically attached a picture and a bump um, to this Lambert. So we're going to see the process of how to create this. Um, it looks kind of complex down here, but it's really not. So let's get started and take a look at how to create this cool texture uh, for uh, just a simple sphere in a plane. So we're going to go and uh, let's let's open up a new project or I mean a, a new scene. So let's just go to new scene. I've already created a um, file that's uh, sort of the start of where I want to where I want to start so I'm gonna minimize that render view for a second as you can see I've just created a plane so create a polygon plane and a uh, sphere so just a simple polygon plane and a sphere and I believe I created one light in here which is a point light and I just sort of brought it straight up overhead and gave it about a 1.5 1.5 uh, intensity so just basic start okay so let's take a look at this if I were to do a quick render on there I'm gonna get something that looks really boring okay it's just a sphere and a plane so we're gonna we're gonna fix that so we're gonna do all of our work in the hypershade for the moment so let's do this let's come down here into the hypershade Oh, one thing before we do the um, hypershade is we're going to be rendering with mental ray today. So um, if you call up your uh, render window, just make sure that you go and, and switch from Maya software if you have it down to mental ray. And in mental ray, what you want to do is just come over here and we're going to click this little box right here. And that's going to open up our render settings, which looks like this. And inside of these render settings, let's just set the quality to production. Uh, I've already set mine to production. You might be at draft at this point, but come down and set it to production quality. And we'll just leave it alone for the moment um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we got our render settings. Now, um, as well, on this ambient light, I did one thing. And I'm going to show you how this affects um, your, your render a little bit. If you notice, um, I have this light in here and over here I've turned off my ray trace shadows from the light. Um, that's my ambient light. Here's the shape. And if you come down into your ray trace shadow attributes, uncheck ray trace shape, uh, ray trace shadows. I'll show you why. I'm going to come in here and we're going to do a quick render. I'll bring up my render view. And that's what it looks like currently. Now, with uh, the ray trace shadows, if I use ray trace shadows, I'll click that on and let's do a quick render. You'll notice where uh, Mental Ray wants to basically shadow that object. So we're going to turn those off for the moment just so we can see everything. So let's minimize our, uh, our render view and let's come over here and turn off Ray Trace Shadows. Okay, so that's step one. Now, I'm going to come up here into the Hypershade. And if you have anything in your Hypershade right here, let's get rid of it. Just go to your Graph and Clear Graph. And that gives us a clean work area. So let's create the first bump 2D uh, surface, which we're going to attach to this uh, to this sphere right here. So let's start simple and just go with a basic Lambert because they're non-reflective and they'll just sort of be a nice nice surface to work with. So I've clicked on that and I got a Lambert on here. Now let's scroll down a little bit and let's look at what's known as the fractal. Okay. Um, there's a, a number of different choices you have as textures to assign. So this one's a very useful one. It's called Fractal. So I'm going to click on Fractal. Now you can see if I back out, scroll out on my, my view here, it 
brought up two separate things. It brought up a fractal 1 and the place 2D. So basically what we're doing here in Maya is we're saying, hey, we want to place a 2D texture that is looking something like this fractal onto this Lambert. So we want this um, sphere to basically inherit this graininess and this, this texture. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. We'll take a look at this. You can move these about a little bit and sometimes they'll, they're will they useful in seeing what your connections are. Okay, so now that we have those in the box and we're ready to work with that, let's take our fractal and I'm going to middle mouse button on the fractal and I'm going to come over here and drop it on top of that sphere. Now you'll notice, in, in ho hopefully yours comes up like this, you have some choices of where to assign that fractal. Well, we, we're interested in the bump map right here because we want it to be bumpy. So we're going to go ahead and assign it to the bump map channel basically of this color. So I'm going to hit that. Okay, now you'll notice it did something, it added a couple of things here. It added a, a bump 2D node and now it's on the Lambert 4 and you can see where that has changed. It looks kind of globular. It used to look like this and now it looks like that. Okay, well that's exactly what we want. Um, what we're going to do is come over here and go ahead and select the sphere and grab your Lambert 4 middle mouse button, your Lambert 4, and drop it on top of your sphere in the scene. Okay, well I did that and it doesn't show up. Well, how come? Um, this is one of the first things you're going to find out when you're dealing with textures and bump nodes and stuff is that we need to be up here into our renderer we need to switch our renderer into high quality rendering okay so now as you can see when I switch to high quality I can now see that beautiful bump that we've assigned to that Lambert so we're halfway there this is where it gets fun um, let's do a quick render I'm going to just move this window over and we're gonna do a quick render and we're gonna see what our starting default looks like and that's pretty much what our starting default looks like cool okay so let's zoom in a little bit more on this texture I'm gonna move down and just sorta of, just sorta of bring it up large so we can see what's going on here and let's take another quick render and you'll notice you see it's bumpy it looks pretty cool it looks like a rock and and that's great okay well let's say you wanna change this out a little bit and you wanna make it uh, have some different properties what we want to do, I'm going to bring my hyper shade over here again. And what we want to do in here is we want to click on our Lambert 4. And let's bring this over here. I'm going to click off of this shape. So let's. Sometimes when you click on things over here, um, they don't automatically appear. Um, but for the most part, they will. So. Uh, sometimes you have to come up into your choose button when you select these nodes because sometimes it sticks. My Maya um, program is kind of sticky and sometimes it won't let me choose these. So I have to come up here into my chooser tool here and then it lets me activate these. Okay, so anyway, let's get on with it. So if I click on the Lambert 4, this basically shows us that its color is gray, which it is, and um, that we do have bump mapping applied, which is a fractal 1. Okay, so up here in your tab section, you'll see you have a bump 2D, and that basically is just the assignment of the bump, and this starts out with a value of 1. We can have control over this by moving this up or down, but for the moment, we'll leave it at number 1. Okay, now the fun stuff. When you click on this fractal 1, this opens up the properties um, for this fractal. So let's move the hyper shade over. And let's play around with some of these um, these attributes here. You'll notice that right now it's it's exactly what we think we're seeing. Well, let's let's play around with the amplitude of, at, to start with. I'm going to just bring this down to about halfway. All right, right about in there. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what what bringing that down to. Okay, so. We're getting something like that. Let's go back to our, um, let's go back to here, and let's um, let's go back to those attributes of the. I'm going to click over. Sometimes you need to be over here. I'm going to click on our fractal one, and that usually brings back our our fractal attributes. And let's play around with the 
threshold. Actually, let's go back to amplitude. I'm going to bring the amplitude all the way down. And as you can see over here in the viewport, if you watch over here, you'll see what happens with the amplitude of that bump. Um, basically, I'm just adding more, more, and more, and more. So if we start out at 100%, this is what we get. I'll go ahead and do a quick render on that, and we'll see where that is. Okay, so looks like that. Now if I take the amplitude all the way down, it looks like that. And where does it start to gain a little bit of texture? Well, let's, let's sort of play with it right there at the 0.147. You're going to be doing a lot of rendering when you're, you're getting things assigned to your materials here, so just keep that in mind. All right, well, I want a little bit more texture than that, so I'm going to bring this amplitude up a bit. We'll take another quick render, and there we go. Okay, great. Now, with this 2D bump node, um, we're going to look at assigning a, an image. Basically, we, we now have the rock that we like, so I'm going to keep it like that, and now let's say I want to give it some rock-like qualities with color and, and some other various properties. And a really cool, easy thing to do is to come down here, click on your Lambert 4, and if it's not present, let's make sure it's up there. And on this color channel, what we're going to do is just basically assign a picture to that channel. So I'll click in there. You can see where we have a file. We can go and choose our file. So I'm going to click Choose File going to bring up these file attributes. I want to assign an image name to that and in this case I already have one. It's called a mock, um, mock stone. Okay, yeah, mock stone by dungeon stock. So this is kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. All right, now as you can see I'm going to bring my hypershade over here. When I did that I now have a couple more um, little boxes over here to take a look at. Um, I've got this file one, and now our, here's our Lambert. So essentially, here is the, the bump going along here. And down here, I've told Maya, hey, let's place this, this uh, picture file on top of that Lambert as well. So now, over here in the viewport, you can see where it's now attached, OK? so. I'm going to move my hypershade out of the way for a minute and let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the render button and voila, you have um, you basically have texture and you know in some cases you're going to really want to play around with some of these. Um, I can rotate this a little bit if I if this is a picture I can rotate the frame a little bit and now I have a little bit different a uh, little bit different look. And as you can see, because it's a picture, there is a seam in it. And so the seam comes right along here. So anyway, just something to be aware of. Now let's go back and uh, take a, another quick look at it, some properties of the fractal and change those up a little bit. I'm going to click on my fractal there in my hypershade. Come over here and let's, um, let's increase the threshold a little bit. And as you'll notice, it really helps when you increase the threshold in this case to make this a, appear as a larger bump than it is. So that's pretty cool. And um, if we change the frequency ratio, let's just change the frequency ratio all the way up. Okay, and that's kind of what you get. Um, so really it's a matter of playing with those. Um, don't really worry about the um, these other controls for the moment. Um, we'll work with those later. Um, so anyway, that's essentially how you assign those elements to get a nice texture on just, say, a simple sphere. So go ahead and play around with that, and I will probably do another tutorial after this one on the Bump 3D node, which is pretty much the same as the Bump 2D. So great. Try that out. So I hope you learned something, and uh, get practicing with Maya, and of course read a book every day, and... Uh, learn something. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks for watching.